this is going to be a different kind of video for me. Now, as you guys know, I review e-bikes, um, started to do scooters, and then I got invited to a strut day in San Francisco, and they have a product called the EV1. It's like a wheelchair, but it's also like a scooter. It has a lot of AI in it, and once I saw like an idea of how this device worked, I said, absolutely, I wanna come down because I believe that this is the kind of device as we move forward into the future that this can really help a lot of people. So I'm gonna show you some things about the EV1 that I got to learn about during their strut day. It started off with a presentation where we learned all about how the science behind it and the technology and then also the user experience. And then we got a chance to check out the EV1 and try it out ourselves. All right, so this is the Pathfinder and it just, you pointed to where you wanted it to go and it actually did it. By just pushing your finger on here and holding it, it will automatically take me around the corner. I'm not using anything. I'm not steering it or anything. It's just doing it on its own. And then at that point, when it gets me there, then I can take over manually and move it around myself. We are doing the speed braking test. I'm gonna have it just floored. We have it in, okay. We are moving and we're coming up to this and I still have the stick forward as you guys can see and it stopped on its own. That, and it, it did it smoothly. It wasn't abrasive and it didn't like throw me forward when it stopped. That is, that's very nice. All right, here we go. We're gonna do some off-roading. We're gonna hit it from the side and see how unstable. Oh my gosh, this thing has a ton of torque. I felt 100% safe doing that. Let me show you what we're doing here again. Like it has no problem making it over. That's impressive. But there are two motors in the back, one on each side, correct? Two motors in the front. Oh, so it's all wheel drive. Oh, I did it. I figured out what it would get stuck with. No, it's still get off. Well, maybe I didn't. What do these buttons do? Speed. Yep. This is a horn. <laughs> that this needs is, to be louder. Yeah. This is a manual mode, so it, there's no assistive whatsoever. So if I'm here, you're knocking the mirror down. I should have won this mode during the demo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is co-pilot. Co-pilot plus. Yeah. Co-pilot. Mm. No, co-pilot plus is when you press. This. Oh, and hold the button. Yeah, hold co-pilot plus. And then the middle button is for, you can see all the different modes we have. So these are, it's currently experimental features, but it will move, be moved um, when we launch. So it's cruise, cruise control? So cruise is uh, where you set a, a path, like you program a path, and uh -huh. then you just keep following the path. Oh, that's what you guys had on when we first came here. Yeah. Um, autonomous driving, that's where it'll just like, like you where you can just tell it to come to you, which he did that yeah. earlier. Okay, and then this. Back camera back camera okay and then if you headlight like over here you can see there are four knobs here so you can put different attachments like um, a cup holder a phone holder or like stuff like that yeah and electricity is running through the whole vehicle so if you are left-handed it's easily solvable oh yeah so you can solve this arm to yeah. that side yeah and then even in the back of the chair, these, you can see there's a port here, there's electricity. Yeah, that was for that handle yeah. or some other thing. Yeah, in the future, if we work with another company or we develop our own like robotic arms, we could attach it here as so. well. And the chairs are hot swappable, I guess. Like if you have like some need for like a different backrest or like mm -hmm. a different seat. So like maybe you have some, someone has like, like some spine problems and they need a special seat. So you just have to have Velcro. Yeah. Then you can attach it on. And we have like, I like it's easier to adjust so you don't have to bring like the whole thing. You don't have to bring tools. Here is something that we're going to try. There is this uneven road here. And we are just cruising around it. Normally, you would fall off, but we are not. We're literally on an uneven surface. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm leaning here to the right. But because of this, I feel totally safe. Like I'm not gonna fall off of this at all. You can stop 
back up or whatever, and you're going to be fine. Let's go. Let's go. What a wonderful thing you guys have built. I mean, I don't have anything wrong with me yet, but I do live life pretty dangerous. I am working this thing on the most odd stuff I can put it on, and this is mastering it every time. It's like this wheelchair is unstoppable. You have five different levels of speeds with this. We don't really know what the top speed is. Somebody said it could be 15 miles an hour, which would be really good if you're trying to make it from point A to point B. It is IPX5 rated, which means it should be able to handle rain uh, as long as it's not too bad. Outside session starting now. Yep. <laughs> okay, so in outside, we will do what we call co-pilot mode. And under this mode, you have full control. It's only when you see obstacles, it stops and only stops. I'm in sport. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are doing some real world testing right here. Well, not, it's not real world, but it is outdoors on uneven terrain. Of course, we're just barely moving with three. Uh, going over there, going over there. Let's put it into four. Oh, it actually tells us how many kilometers per hour that we're going. So I'm sure that they'll have a miles per hour instead of just kilometers per hour. But right now it shows we're doing 6.5 kilometers and I'm in pedal assist number four. So let's go ahead and put it into number five and see what the top speed of this is, which is sport. It is now entered into sport. You ready to race? You ready? No. Yeah, let's try. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'll beat me for sure. That's right. Come on, we're running them, guys. But whenever you let off, it just automatically stops like if you're in a golf cart. So that's how that works. All right, let's see what the top speed is. Right now, it looks like we're doing 11 kilometers. And then for some reason, it just cut off. We're gonna do this uneven terrain right here. We're climbing up this right here. Oh, because we're in cockpit plus, it sees that I'm heading towards this wall. So it stopped. Got it. So this keeps you safe even out here in the real world. That's what that's what it does. So with the copilot or with copilot on, but it's not copilot plus. It's not right. Copilot. So but it's still reading everything around me. That's right. why when I came up on there real quick, it was like no, because I was it was like you're heading into a wall. Yes, something like that. And basically you are on an incline, so you'll slow down automatically as well because it's not the safest position to be. Oh, okay. So then it, it reads what's coming up ahead and then adjust accordingly. Correct. Uh, even on, even on Copilot, and then Copilot right. Plus so would do what? There's no downslope, but even if you say on a downslope, you realize that the speed will also reduce automatically because yeah. they know that going downslope is dangerous, even on the Copilot mode. Yeah, and then, but out in the real world here. Okay, so what Copilot Plus does is that it will avoid hitting, so it will swerve around. Right, as opposed to just stop. Correct. Got it. That's right. We're gonna drag race them first. I mean, come on, you gotta you gotta do the drag racing part first. I'm not gonna tell them about sport mode though. The right lane is for winners. Three, two, one. No. <laughs> oh, this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I'm heavier than he is and that's why it's not happening. And then it just stopped. It just took the L. It just stopped on its own. I should have put it in plus. Now we're even the odds. Now we're both in drive, which means we're out of control and we can hit stuff. It's to that cone. to that cone. Wait, this cone is ill-placed for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to that's Here, that's your get out in front real quick, guys. It feels like some dude, now we could bumper cars these things. No, very close. Look at oh the lighter one the lighter guy's throwing it away. We're, we're, we're racing to the lake now. <laughs> oh, man. That like, that like an <laughs> yeah, that was like the slowest drag race ever. I, I lost, but I still feel good. Was that a decent clip? Yeah. After seeing this in person, I just knew that this is something that's going to help a lot of people. So much so that I asked them to send me one uh, to Chicago. I want to try it out in real world situations. I want to see how it can go onto the bus. We're going to take it downtown. I'm going to try riding it in the uh, in the city just to see how it is and on the sidewalks and, and how all of the features. I mean, I only went over a couple of them that they had during this event. So they are bringing me one and sending it here, and I will be doing a very full in-depth video on the EV1.
if you are interested in finding out like the pricing and stuff like that on the EV1, well, they are going to start having pre-order pricing on the Strut Drivers Club Facebook group. That's where you're gonna find it. It's gonna start on December 5th. And then on January 5th is when we will all see what the pricing is as well. So if you're looking for some big savings, we'll then hop in on the Facebook group and, and check that out. And if not, well, on January 5th, I'll be posting another video showing you guys what the actual pricing of the EV1 is. I am very happy that I went out for the strut day in San Francisco, and I'm very much looking forward to getting my hands on the EV1 and giving it that real world testing. But for now, I wanna thank you guys for watching. And until I see you again, enjoy the ride.